This is Mystery. We're in Scotland. And this is historic Glam's Castle. And on today's show... How did a visit to a local church change one girl's life forever? And we tried to discover who was making weird telephone calls in the middle of the night. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? This is Shiara. And that's Steve. And today we're at one of the most haunted buildings in Scotland. Welcome to Glam's Castle. This magnificent castle is cram-packed full of mysteries that are hundreds of years old. It's seen murder, curses and bloodshed. And although we don't know exactly when the castle was built, we do know that the earliest records started as far back as the 14th century. That's an amazing 700 years old. That's just a bit older than you, Shiara. Thanks, Steve. Anyway, I'm really glad we came here for a visit. Just look at this wonderful building, those gorgeous turrets and the wonderful landscape. It's fantastic. Steve. Wow, this is really interesting stuff. Steve, this is where you are. Sorry, Shara, I couldn't put up with your rambling any longer. Anyway, it's time for our first mystery of the day. As exciting as this castle. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, and it's almost as old. Our story concerns a young, beautiful girl. Oh, Steve, I was wondering when you were going to notice me. No, not you. <laughs> Not that you're not good looking or anything. No, no, it's just that in the book it says it's about a girl and maybe you should just um, see for yourself. This is Gatcombe Village on the Isle of Wight and it's the scene of one of the most bizarre stories ever to have been told. Our story begins at the church in 1831 and concerns a young, beautiful girl called Lucy Lightfoot. Lucy was a friendly girl and was popular with everyone in the community. <laughs> As the service was about to end, Lucy noticed something from the corner of her eye. What Lucy had caught sight of was the statue of Edward Astaire. Are you all right, my dear? Everyone else has left. Yes, sorry, Vicar. I'm quite well, thank you. Tell me, who is this gentleman? Oh, that's Edward Estuer. He was a nobleman from around these parts, but sadly he died whilst on the Crusades of the 12th century. That the words which we have heard this day with our outward ears may through their grace be there our inwards within our hearts. And then we bring forth in us the fruit of the Over the next few months, it became clear that Lucy had become obsessed with the figure of Edward Astaire. She loved to tell him her news and would read stories of his adventures. In short, she had fallen in love with him. One day, Lucy had arrived at the church as usual. She tethered her horse to the gate and went inside. Almost as soon as she had entered, a violent storm appeared out of nowhere and the rain began pelting down. When the storm subsided, a local farmer noticed Lucy's horse and went into the church to see if she was all right. Hello? Hello? Lucy, are you all right? What happened? Come on, don't keep me in suspense. She was never seen again. And there you have it, the disappearance of Lucy Lightfoot. Hang on, you're not going to leave it like that, are you? Actually, there is a small twist to the tale. 30 years had passed since the disappearance of Lucy Lightfoot, and no solution was ever found. 
The new vicar at Gatcombe had a keen interest in history and spent much of his spare time going through the old church records. One evening, he was looking at the records about the Crusades led by Edward Esther 500 years ago when a name caught his eye and he made a startling discovery. Oh my word, it can't be. How extraordinary. According to the document, Lucy Lightfoot was Edward Esther's wife and had gone with him on the Crusades. She'd stopped in Cyprus to wait for her husband to return, but he never did. So what do you make of that? Well, I guess it could be a coincidence, but it's pretty bizarre. I mean, two women with the same name, in love with the same man, but 500 years separating them. Maybe the later Lucy Lightfoot was a reincarnation of the first one and was destined to carry her love for one man forever. Or maybe... Love conquered all and a mysterious time lapse enabled Lucy to travel 500 years back to be with the man she loved. Yeah, right, whatever. <sighs> but uh, no one does know what happened and to this day, the mystery of Lucy Lightfoot remains unsolved. in the dining room of Glam's Castle and just look at the size of this table. Imagine how many friends you can have over here for dinner. Steve, are you going to come in here because I'm a bit scared by myself? Now you may be wondering where Shiara is. Let me show you. If I walk just through here, then you'll see. Hey Shiara. Hi. Oh, it's a bit cold in here, isn't it? I know, that's because we're in an old part of the castle called the Crypt which sounds a bit spooky, doesn't it? But that's not surprising when I tell you that over there is a hidden secret chamber with a very sinister tale to tell. Behind this wall, there's a secret sealed room. You can make out the shape of the room by looking at this plan. Now you'll notice that next to the secret room, there's a window, and that is this one behind me. And I'm standing in the next room at the next window along. From the outside of my window on the roof, if I walk towards Shiara's, you can see a third window that's been bricked up in the wall between us. Hello, Shiara. And not only that, but just here behind this chair, you can make out the outline of where the doorway would have been deep inside the vault. Legend has it that one of the Lords of Glams and his friends continued to play cards well after midnight on a Saturday. This meant they were playing on the Sunday, the Sabbath. From this moment on, the two men were cursed. It's said that when they died, their spirits were condemned to play cards together for eternity. So great were the disturbances that the room was completely sealed 300 years later. And the ghosts of the two men can still be heard playing their card game from deep within the chamber. And this is why Glam's Castle is renowned as being one of the most haunted buildings in Scotland. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sarah and I live in Stenning in West Sussex. For a while now, I have been interested in the mystery of the Chanctonbury Ring, so I've come up here to investigate it for myself. The ring is made by a crown of trees on top of the hill. The ring has loads of history, but the most interesting things about the hill come out after dark. In 1972, two friends were walking their dogs when they saw an object glowing in the distance. After a minute, the object moved away. Sightings of a similar looking craft have been reported at various times since then. As well as the UFOs, the ring is said to be where fairies live. Weirder than that is the story that the ring is haunted by the ghost of a man riding on a horse. But the scariest thing happened more recently. A group of people had decided to camp in the ring. They were just going to bed for the night when they heard a terrifying scream. No one knows why so many strange things happen here. I haven't solved this mystery yet, but my investigation continues. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wouldn't camp up there. No way, that place gives me the creeps. Well, sometimes mysterious things can happen in places where you least expect them. What sort of mysterious things? Well, our next mystery involves lots of unexplained phone calls and took place in a town not far from here in Scotland. Andy Wright and his family were at home at 
about to have dinner. Come on, Andy. Dinner's on the table. OK, Carl. I've just been reading the paper. Come on, Dad. We're all waiting for you. <laughs> this looks nice. Just as the family took into their mail, the telephone started to ring. Wait a minute. I'll get it. Hello? 2943? Hello? Is anyone there? Later that same night, Duncan Larch was safely tucked up in bed, when suddenly... Hello? Hello, is anyone there? The next morning, Gary and Tina Simpson were having breakfast, when they were interrupted by the telephone ringing. Hello? Oh, hi, Andy. Weird telephone calls. No, I haven't had one. What sort of noises? A few minutes later, the telephone rang again, and Tina answered it. It was Duncan, ringing to tell them about his strange call. You've heard noises too? OK, Duncan, let us know if it keeps happening. Bye. Again, Gary and Tina attempted to have their breakfast. I can't believe someone phoned Duncan at 2 o'clock in the morning. I wonder who it could have been. There's our phone. I'll get it this time. Hello? Hello? Look, is there someone there? Gary listened carefully to the noises down the phone, and he started to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, who did you think was making all those strange calls? It was probably just somebody playing a joke on them all. But why did only Gary find it funny? Let's take a look back before the calls started. Gary was arriving for a normal day's work at the safari park, where he met his colleague Duncan. Morning, Duncan. Morning, Gary. Have a good evening. Yeah, fine, thanks. What are you up to today? I'm off to clean out the house on Chimp Island. See you later. Goodbye. Hi, Andy. You all right? Yes, thanks. I'll be on the island if you need to get hold of me. OK. See you later. OK. Gary boarded his boat and made his way to the chimps on the island, where he was going to clean out their house. As usual, they were already out and about and pleased to see him. <laughs> So what's that got to do with all the strange phone calls? Well, there's obviously a connection between all the people who received the phone calls. Yeah, they all work at the same safari park. Oh, well done. And Gary have been cleaning out the enclosure? Yeah, but what's that... Look, you're just about to find out. What Gary didn't know is that when he was cleaning out the chimp's enclosure, he had accidentally dropped his mobile phone out of his pocket. One of the chimps saw the strange object and went over to investigate. He picked up the phone and spent the next few hours playing around with it. He ended up dialing all the people that were stored in the phone's memory. It was only when the keeper heard the grunt-like noises down the phone that he realised who, or should I say what, was making the calls. And I guess because Gary works with chimps every day, he knew exactly what sounds they make. And knowing that he'd mislaid his phone, he put two and two together and realised that the chimpanzee had in fact made the calls. Hello? Hello? Who is it? It's just somebody monkeying around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of Mystery. And that's it from Glam's Castle. I wonder where we'll be next time. You'll have to watch to find out. Shall I? Don't answer it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. On our next show, find out what incredible coincidence happened to this man. And we investigate the legend of King Arthur. Did he really exist?